It is 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on this Friday, August 17th, and we have Tropical Depression 7 starting to regenerate over the Bay of Campeche, and we've got a very strong tropical wave that just exited the African coast, and this wave is likely to go on and become a hurricane within the next seven days. At the time that this video is being made, the hurricane hunters are still flying into the tropical low that is located in the Bay of Campeche and Southwest Gulf. So we do not have the official word from the Hurricane Center as to whether or not Tropical Depression 7 has regenerated into a depression or has perhaps even gone on to become a tropical storm. But I highly suspect that within the next 6 to 12 hours, we will be seeing an upgrade from the National Hurricane Center. And that is because convection has increased rather substantially over the past 12 hours. And more importantly than anything, it is developing near what appears to be a well-defined low-level surface circulation located just to the east of the Mexican coastline. The enhanced infrared also shows convection persisting quite well near this closed surface circulation and the water vapor shows improving conditions out across the western Gulf of Mexico with more signs of developing outflow and upper level ridging aloft and this has been expected for the past 48 hours with the anticipation that this upper level low is going to continue moving westward while starting to weaken. Meanwhile, the latest low-level steering should continue to push this developing depression or storm into Mexico, and we are expecting a landfall within the next 24 to 48 hours. But over the next three to five days, it will also be interesting to see whether or not the low or remnants of the low can remain just close enough to the coastline to persist because we've got an amplifying trough over the central and eastern United States, and this trough will want to have the tendency to pull any load that is near the Mexican coastline back over the open waters and although another round of regeneration is somewhat unlikely at this time, it is definitely a scenario that cannot be completely discounted. The latest 18Z run of the tropical model suite shows a northwest track and landfall across Mexico within the next day, but you've still got some of the models even shown on this graphic implying more of a turn toward the northeast in the extended range, so we will be continuing to monitor this disturbance for the next several days. We're going to take a more in-depth look at the models in just a moment, but we also need to very closely discuss newly formed Tropical Disturbance 94L located to the southeast of the Cape Verde Islands. And this tropical wave already looks fairly well defined with a very broad area of low pressure. And conditions out ahead of this feature look very favorable over the next five to seven days. And so therefore this system is likely to go on to become the next hurricane of the 2012 season. Many of the tropical waves that have exited Africa so far this season have had to encounter unfavorable conditions in the eastern Atlantic, primarily in the form of a lot of Saharan air and dry air pushing southwest into the deep tropics, but we don't see that quite so much in today's water vapor animation. In fact, the dry air intrusions are limited well to the north, and it looks like we've got a favorable moisture profile down toward the south near the Cape Verde Islands, and the winter values appear to be generally low, with upper level ridging extending westward out of the west coast of Africa. Nearly all members of the tropical model suite are suggesting a west to just north of west track over the next five days. And the extended range GFS ensemble members are in a lot of disagreement as we go beyond day five, as you've got several model members taking it toward the eastern Caribbean, while you still have the second half that are showing it turn more toward the north between 50 and 60 degrees west longitude. If the tropical wave were to remain relatively weak throughout the extended period, then there is little to no question that a more westerly track would continue underneath the low-level steering flow to the south of this subtropical Atlantic ridge. But if it becomes stronger in a very quick period of time, then it will be more prone to feeling the weaknesses that are located more so in the mid-level steering flow. And every so often, as indicated in the current steering, you get a small weakness in the subtropical Atlantic ridge, and that would promote a turn more toward the north. But having said that, regardless of the intensity, if any of these weaknesses were to fill in and the subtropical ridge re-intensifies aloft, then that would also promote a more westerly or west-northwesterly track. This afternoon's model guidance is very interesting, and I will explain why as we go through each animation. Starting first with the 12Z run of the Canadian CMC model, we see that whatever forms from the remnants of Tropical Depression 7 in the western Gulf of Mexico, moves inland across eastern Mexico, but then the remnant energy gets swung back toward the northeast into the northern gulf as a trough begins to advance southward near the U.S. central gulf coast. The CMC is the most aggressive run, and it is showing a tropical cyclone redeveloping to the south of Houston, but keep in mind this is the only model showing something quite this aggressive, 
So please take that into consideration. Now, with regards to the African wave, there is something very important that I would like to point out. As of the 12Z time period this morning, the CMC had the tropical wave correctly initialized to the south of the Cape Verde Islands, but it also has a secondary vorticity max located within the intertropical convergence zone just to the west of the tropical wave axis. As I set the animation into motion once again, you're going to see in nearly all of the models that they are showing this ITCZ vorticity maximum being lured back into the tropical wave and once you've got two vorticity maxes in such close proximity to each other this induces somewhat of a Fujiwara effect meaning that the low pressure systems simply interact and cause the tracks to interact with each other and it brings the whole system in general northward and if it lifts this system too far to the north in a short period of time then this could disrupt the entire six day forecast track which will of course be very important for interest across the Northeast Caribbean. As we quickly switch over to the latest GFS run, we see this feature even more prominently as we start the animation. You've got the tropical wave here, but we've got more spokes of the intertropical convergence zone wrapping up into what is more than likely going to be this tropical storm, but then they also split off toward the Northeast, and as it continues into day seven, you see that we've got a second tropical system trying to develop in this model to the Northeast of our primary low which is going to be located closer to the Caribbean at this time. But I must say, if the models are incorrectly showing the second feature to the northeast, then that's going to completely throw off the forecast, because if this doesn't exist, then our main system is not going to feel the impacts of any troughing over the middle Atlantic quite as much, and it's going to have the tendency to be located a little bit more toward the southwest. The ECMWF model is only available in 24-hour increments online, so we can't really show as much detail that we looked at with the CMC and GFS models. But over the next 24 and 48 hours, you can see a similar picture in the vorticity analysis. You've got two spokes of energy here as we go into the 24-hour time frame, but everything merges together a little bit better on this model within 48 hours, and therefore it's showing more of a westerly track and the European has been trending more toward the west in the extended range for the past two days now. And as we go into day five and day six and even day seven, we've got a strengthening tropical storm or hurricane just barely bypassing the Virgin Islands. And as we go into days eight through ten, it's feeling the impacts of West Atlantic troughing. So we're seeing a northwest track. But even by day ten, this would be something to keep an eye on with a hurricane situated just to the east of the Bahamas. So the big question over the next 72 hours is will any of this energy out toward the west within the intertropical convergence zone really focus itself more toward the north as it evolves and then try to lure this whole entire system more toward the north within the next three to four days because if it does any shift toward the north is going to have major ramifications down the road but I have the tendency to believe that this is not going to happen I think we're going to see more of a westerly track with time but that remains to be seen. The good news is that we've got at least five days to watch this thing before it were to be any threat to the Caribbean. And finally, just to summarize what we expect in the Western Gulf, we do think that a tropical depression or tropical storm will form within the next 12 hours and quickly followed up by a landfall along the Mexican coastline since we still have some weak ridging out across Texas. But anything that lingers around the Mexican coastline for 48 to 72 hours will try to be drawn back over the open waters as we have a lot of troughing out across the central United States. It may not be in the form of a tropical cyclone entity, but regardless, this is an example of what we can anticipate even if redevelopment does not occur near Texas. The GFS model is showing nothing more than a sheer disturbance, bringing more in the way of rainfall out across Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and the Florida Panhandle as the southwest vertical wind shear begins to increase just to the immediate south of that trough. So there is a lot happening in the tropics on this Friday afternoon, and we here at 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app will continue to provide you updates throughout the weekend.